Hello and welcome to the Tech with Heart show. I am your host, Michelle Calloway. Tech with Heart is all about enlightening and empowering small business owners to be able to embrace technologies, automations, systems, and strategies that are going to help them stay competitive and relevant in a rapidly changing digital business landscape. And today's topic is around how tech leaders could be more heart-centric so that they could have more impact with their teams. And with that, we brought in a specialist, somebody who's an expert in this area. Her name is Ritu Chopra. She is a technologist by profession and an author, a TV show host, and award-winning award film producer. She's a certified leadership coach and an international speaker. So she's kind of a big deal. She brings 25 years plus of experience in Fortune 500 companies serving in IT operations and information security in global financial and healthcare industries. So Ritu now mentors and coaches emerging leaders to achieve their personal mastery. She is founder of Lead My Way, which is a not-for-profit organization, and is, she's very passionate about advocating for women leadership and empowerment. So help me welcome to the Tech With Heart stage, Ritu. Michelle, thank you so much for the warm welcome. Very pleased to be here with you. We are super happy that you're here as well. And so we're going to dive right on because this is a topic that I think that you know, more tech leaders need to hear, right? Whether they're women, men, or whatnot, no matter what age, this is going to be valuable information. We're going to start by asking, you know, what is something regarding leadership and transparency and trust that you can speak to those that are tuning in right now, especially tech leaders? It's a very important question. So transparency and trust. So trust, as in it's a foundation of any relation, let alone it's this. Same thing goes for business, right? The trust building process between vendors, partners, customers. So customers are users of your products and services. Um, a whole lot goes into understanding the market. There's so much money and effort spent in market research. So customers who are going to be your users they need to trust your product. So we cannot just say that, okay, you know, it just uh, applies into personal relation, regardless where you are in this open business landscape where people buy goods and services beyond borders in today's market. So building trust is a very important process. Um, and trust it's a little bit different than accepting truth. Truth can be uh, very individual. My truth can be different than yours and someone else's. But accepting the facts that we live in uh, is more important process for the trust building. Uh, because we are looking from as a cultural perspective, as a user's perspective, as a generational perspective, we're looking through our filters, how we make decisions. And those decisions apply either is for um, building a new product, creating a new product, software, system, or the market has come up with a new strategy to um, bring up an innovative service or a product, that there is a big need. How do you create those uh, trustworthy relation with your buyers and services? Because as I mentioned, there's so much money and effort spent in um, research, building, creating, and marketing. So if we look at holistically, I think the answer is clear. Uh, the transparency and trust in 
letting customer know how it serves their need and how willing you as a servicer are interested and ready to, to um, serve them the product and services that you are reaching out with to the new market or existing market. So uh, long answer, but I think it, it takes a long time to build, but it can be shattered easy. Just as we know in our personal relations and same thing, the uh, market repetition is very important. The uh, usability, credibility of a product and a service is really important. And especially if we are talking about there's millions of apps. Apps play a very important role these days in our daily lives. We are marketing many, many services and products through the use of apps, right? So we reach, that's how we reach out to our uh, customers and our potential customers. Um, so there is a lot of long process in building the trust and maintaining is equally important. I would agree. I think that maintaining it, once you get it, maintaining it is so important. And I think that uh, serves, leans a lot towards like, how do you manage your customer service side, right? So if you are uh, responsive, that's a good indicator that people can trust you like you actually, or your team gets back to people when they, you know, have an inquiry. Or um, if, you know, let's just say, somebody leaves a bad review for some reason, being able to even respond to reviews um, to try and just kind of you know, like say, if somebody left you a one-star review because they had an unfortunate circumstance, you could just say, oh, um, you know, well, thank you for you know sharing this information. However, you know, our customer service is here to, you know, help you with these things. Did you reach out to customer service? And, you know, if they say, yeah, yeah, yeah I did and blah, 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 you could just say, well, this is very rare and I'm so sorry that you had that experience. But being able to reply online helps others to see that that one person is maybe a little bit kind of like, uh, uh um, not the typical situation, right? So you're able to like negate their low score uh, rating by you responding. And that helps others see, oh, okay, well, at least the company responded, you know, and they're not just ignoring this. So that's, the, do you have any other thoughts or any other examples on other ways? Because you mentioned customers, but I also know that we talked about vendors and partners. What are some ways that we can build trust with those guys? Um I would answer that. And let's talk about that there is customer service on the customer service part of it. The experience of customer service has changed drastically, right? So instead of speaking to person or like human being, we're speaking to chatbots. We're communicating with chatbots, right? And the uh, AI chatbots, are really intelligent chatbots. You can you could set up any kind of level of communication with the chatbots these days, and they're designed to redirect you to a human user if the answer is not resolved. So for people, for users to understand that we are living in a world filled with technology, and I know some people may not wanna hear this or like my answer, but I want to share that with you. How many of us use Alexa and Siri to make a phone call, to set any answer in a Google or something that we don't even want to type ourselves and just have Siri do that for me? Alexa, play the music or whatever, right? We have and chatbot is one of the other form of Alexa and Siri, right? So we have to understand that we are living in a new world. We have come here. There's no going back, <laughs> right? So that's the uh, that comes with the customer. Let's talk about vendors or business owners and things. And that's same thing apply because for a entrepreneur. The challenges are really high and it takes a heavy load to 
change your business process, your business model. If your vendors are going online and they are making automation and you have papers and pencils and Excel spreadsheet or something and you ship certain way things are changing, you're forced to adopt. There's a high cost of bringing that automation to a small business um, and your workforce, for a small business owner, your workforce, your people, so accustomed to a certain way of doing business, now you're forced to train them in a different way. So there's an invisible cost to a vendor, uh, I mean, to a, uh, a business owner. So the trust is equally important with a entrepreneur and a vendor. Because just using the technology because it's available, how does it serve your customer as a vendor of a service, right? And uh, a whole lot goes into it. We'll, we'll, I'm sure you have more questions for me. We'll get into those conversations. But I just wanted to kind of touch on those um, um, a trust building process. Uh, our human values, we have to think of the long term, right? I remember my father was an attorney long ago. They said that his industrialist clients used to say that the written contracts on the paper, sometimes the business partners set aside because they value relationship more. I know we are in a very different world. Our, uh, you know, so, uh, the long uh, pages of terms and conditions that hardly anyone has chance to read it or let alone understand it fully, we live by that. But uh, in this world, we still have to think of the long-term relationships, especially if you're a small business owner or supplier to small business owners. Being able to do business online is crucial for survival, especially during times of social distancing. So how do you survive and thrive in the sea of digital noise? It's a lot like fishing. You need to know who your perfect customer is so that you can use the right kind of lure to attract them. We help you catch your perfect customer and retain them for future sales through highly converting websites, influencer mobile apps, getting you featured in the news and on TV. Hi, my name is Jerry Bowden, U.S. Army veteran and president of Revealio Software Solutions. Our goal is to help you rise above the competition, be seen as an expert authority in your industry and embrace technology to stay competitive for long-term success. It's more affordable than you may think. So reach out to us at Revealio.com and together we will make your business come alive. Relationships are what it's all about. That's kind of what Tech with Heart is all about is helping make sure that when you do embrace the tech, which you really need to be embracing the tech, um, we want to make sure that you're using it in a way that it enhances that human relationship, even like we're speaking a little bit about the customer service side, um, because relationships are where it's at. People do business with people. They don't do business with robots. They don't want to always talk to a robot. Sometimes a robot's a great way or a chatbot is a great way to start a conversation, but then quickly allow them to get to a human if that is the need. I mean, last I think I, I speak for a, a tremendous amount of people that when they say, when I say that you get frustrated when you can't get through to a human after engaging with a chat bot, three or four messages, right? So figure out how to make sure that that uh, process for the customers is smooth and easy so that you're not burning that bridge, causing that customer to potentially go to Google and leaving you a negative review in the first place. So yeah, I think uh, before we move on to the next kind of topic here, Redo, is there anything else you'd like to add to what I just said? Um, yes, actually you made a very good point here that you know after a while you need a human interaction, right? And I have come across myself as a user that companies have completely disconnected the process. Going forward, this is the process. That process has to be vetted at the levels. And so, okay, if you're completely disengaging, uh, have a better process in place. 
um, so that's that can lead to negative um, comments or experience user experience so yes agree okay we're going to shift from the transparency and trust type of topic now to being maybe more uh, we talked a little bit already about this, but maybe you can allude to anything else you'd like to share, being that you're a technologist yourself and tech leaders need to have awareness around what is a people-centric approach to not only customers, but partners, vendors, et cetera. Okay. And that's, again, very important question because a people-centric approach, now we are in a... Uh, living with technology, um, young, um, a very young child is exposed to technology, right? Uh, they're playing games on mobile devices, etc. So they're born with technologies, let's say that. So having the user in mind, the design thinking process, and I had uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the products and services are bought and sold beyond borders. We are interacting with different cultures. We are interacting with uh, gender. Uh, the, the buyers could be, there could be uh, somebody buying for someone else. Those uh, decisions are being made. So to understand the user behavior with this online services models, um, has drastically changed within even last decade, let alone, I would say, maybe in a few years, post-COVID, right? Um, and people become used to the ease of shopping or using services um, being delivered at your door. And, you know, relying upon the change business model, having that customer service, reliability um, in continuation of sustaining those customers. And I'm sure there's a heavy cost for the business behind the scenes, right? Uh, and there's some cost, most of the cost is shifted back to customer. So if you look at how in front of our eyes, within years and months, economy is shifting, user behavior is shifting, our needs are shifting. Um, a, a good examples that uh, I came across researching for my book is that there are seven generations, seven living generation as we speak. The needs are different as we have shifted to online shopping behavior, online uh, user uh, uh, products and services, it can be anything, the sun, right? So a lot of it has shifted to online, which we talk about technology. Uh, online, that means technology, um, transactions, payment, everything else. To fit the needs of seven generations who have very different needs and are buying habits, how would you understand the user behavior? Who's making the decisions? So there's a whole lot goes to understand for a, a tech leader, the people-centric approach, not just as a good product and, you know, it's a high tech, it's an innovative product. You know, the, um, um, there's so much is happening in the industry right now. So to focus on a people-centric approach, user interface, design thinking, uh, ease of use, who you're silent. I would emphasize on this, silent stakeholders. Who are they? Who make the decision for anyone else? Who have a say that your product would be successful or not in the market? So those are very important uh, points to consider for tech leaders. I think that I hear a lot of uh, small business owners uh, needing to understand that it's called segmentation, like identifying what different customer avatars, what they're, you know, what they bring to the scene that you could potentially solve and being able to create a message that relates to them and resonates with them versus just going for a 
all in one group kind of a, a message. It does take extra time to do that. And I'm finding that there are newer automations that will allow like a, perhaps a, um, a phrase on, on a web page or a landing page to be modified based upon the keyword that was searched for in certain, I mean, technology is getting there to the point where it's making it a little easier for businesses to navigate this segmentation issue rather than having to create, if you have 12 different customer avatars and their, their problems are a little different rather than creating 12 different landing pages that all sell the same service, but the message is resonating at first with the problem that that particular persona is having. So I know we're getting there. Um, I know technology and AI, like you were saying, even just being able to have a an online chat bot allow people to speak into it versus just have to type into it. Um, I know if it's somebody on a mobile, it's a lot easier for them because they obviously can just tap the um, little microphone icon and speak into that chat bot. But online, when it comes to desktop users or whatnot, um, they don't have that necessarily that same capacity. So it's always so good for you to put yourself into the shoes of the customers that you're trying to attract so that you are indeed building a people-centric approach. Ritu, I am a, a visual storyteller expert. That's my, my, my jam. I believe so much in the power of story to make that message more, even more relatable than just an ad, right? Like, but an ad can include a story. So do you have any thoughts on using video storytelling as a tool to create that more people-centric approach? Yes, uh, it's, it's an actually good idea. People like to listen to stories. They want to understand. A lot of the stories we relate to ourselves, but I want to just kind of add something you had uh, shared with the user behavior. Um, uh, that we are being really spoiled with these, uh, you know, you could speak to a chatbot and do the work and we want instant answers. We're becoming spoiled customers also. So uh, the tech leaders, they have to understand you have given us a chatbot and then who can easily uh, uh, give us an answer. And our next thing is that if we didn't have uh, a problem solving 30 seconds per se, you know, we get impatient. Right? So it's a double-edged sword there. It really, really is. That's why it pays. If you're going to put a bot on your website or anything like that on your social media, make sure it's actually like useful. Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, the um, uh, storytelling, as we have shifted from that personal interaction, going to a shopping mall, interacting with sales staff or, or uh, to online, right? So the stories have, be, uh, have become more important that if people have actually used those products and services, how it, important it becomes for um, easing their lives, how the product or service is uh, impacting them positively because a lot of the newer type of automations or products services you know uh, in a nutshell we call them like products and services are benefiting people to solve their day-to-day -day issues right and let's go into the business side of it from a user uh, a individual user to businesses especially the small businesses entrepreneurs um, family-owned businesses, um, or uh, it could be single owner businesses. So much effort is required to change from one process to another. There's so much invisible cost. Making decision is not easy. I would say that majority of the entrepreneurs, if I could just visualize they would rely more upon someone they met at the chamber, someone uh, in their business industry. They would rely more upon the information received from uh, their competition or someone in the same industry than believing in an ad, right? It's a human human thing. 
right? So the good pros and cons here, the good and the bad here is that, okay, you have a word of mouth referral that we used to use, and you have that kind of trust worthiness from someone recommending it. At the same time, what suits one business type may not be a good right fit when it comes to the technology. It's very difficult. Small business owners don't have the time to invest, to analyze these kinds of things. You don't know what you don't know. And that's where I think a lot of failures come in, but the tech leaders must invest some time in to understand their customers. Yeah. Have that kind of approach to bring in into. Well, I know that when it comes to selling online, there's a, a tremendous amount of need to understand marketing and psychographics and just a lot of the psychology of what makes people make buying decisions. So um, Ritu, I know that you are an executive coach. I know that you uh, love working with tech leaders, um, just more innovative leaders, um, those that are just really wanting to uh, master themselves as a professional, but then also be able to be a better leader because of that. So how can um, somebody who's interested in learning more about how you can help them be a more effective leader in that capacity, reach out to you? Oh, um, a website, LinkedIn, um, email. Uh, we have, uh, there's so many ways to reach us, reach me. And uh, of course, I'm uh, on Amazon as my book uh, is there, the, the most recent book. I proudly like to talk about it. If you're okay for me to share this, the Women Leadership in the 21st Century, uh, Creating and Raising Cautious Leaders of Tomorrow. This book is not for women. This is for men and women. Where women, especially the baby boomer generation of women, um, were either voluntarily or involuntarily uh, out of the workforce right now, have decades of valuable experience. Decades of valuable experience, and they are, um, if they have left the workforce, extremely important uh, to pass the baton, raise the cautious leaders of tomorrow as we are living into a generation of the, uh, there is a challenge at every uh, segment of our lives. We look at into the climate, the healthcare, the education, uh, but they're just like wherever you turn, uh, the breathable air to drinkable water to SDGs, there is so much. So our challenges are different. And so the leadership styles have to change and adapt to the need of the challenges we have. So my book, uh, talks about a whole lot where women take the lead and bringing men into the conversation. As women, we have the ability to bring everyone to the table. So I talk about it, but uh, your question to reach me from LinkedIn to website, uh, womenleadershipbook at gmail.com is a common email that anyone can reach out to. Okay. So RituChopra.com as well is a great place to go to learn more about Ritu. Um, for the sake of time, we are going to have to wrap that up. And I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the Tech with Heart show, Ritu. Um, thank you for sharing about your book. I hope people do take advantage of that. And we will make that link available on the video for those that are watching. Um, also, if you're tuning in on the radio show right now, we will also make that link available in the um the blog on our website. So please visit us. Uh, check us out at techwithheartnetwork.com. We are here to empower you, the small business owner, to be more efficient, more effective, and resonate your message better with your audience. T taking today's topic into uh, example, you're, you're, you're building a relationship with people on the internet without necessarily having to have the opportunity to meet with them face-to-face. So there's a lot that goes into that. So I do recommend you reach out to Ritu if you want to be a better uh, leader in that capacity to be more effective or just reach out to us at techwithheartnetwork.com. We are here to enlighten you and empower you to be successful in a digital era. Here's to your success.
Your story needs to be seen and heard, and your brand needs to be revealed. Revealio elevates purpose-driven businesses into the spotlight through video storytelling, augmented reality video marketing, and professional website design. Get discovered online or in the news. Be featured in national magazines or host your own TV, podcast, or live radio show. Together, we make your brand come alive. All it takes is Revealio. Visit Revealio.com to get started today. Minority and service-disabled veteran-owned.